Good evening. You are listening to 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. It is currently 10.01 p.m. on Wednesday, November 29th. I'm your host, Marissa Thorne. I'm your co-host, Jolie DeMonte. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. And today we are discussing the Rockefeller Christmas Center. Ro- oh, my God. You know what? I'm done. I'm leaving. No, 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 no. We are discussing the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. And so much more. We are first going to move on to our news update with Danny. So, Danny, what is the latest with news? Thank you, Marissa. And good evening. I'm Danny Cammy, and this is WMSC News. A new solar system has been discovered in the Milky Way. This six-planet system has left scientists in awe with how perfectly synchronized each planet is. There are no signs of life within the system. It's almost like it's never been touched for billions of years. Now, more in national news, West Virginia is in the works of converting an entire school system to solar power. This plan will be the first huge development in renewable energy for Appalachian's public schools hopefully setting the foundation for more eco-friendly changes. And in local news, a West Orange church donated a total of $30,000 in goods to those in need during Thanksgiving week. This equates to about 250 baskets of groceries, which were given out to members of the community in West Orange. And now for the weather. Tonight, make sure you bundle up as temperatures drop to a low 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomorrow, you can expect clear skies with a high of 47 and a low of 26. This has been WMSC News. Back to you, Marissa. Thank you, Danny. And moving right on to the world of sports with Girlene. Girlene, what are the sports updates that we have? Good evening. I'm Girlene, and this is WMSC Sports. So in season, currently it's NFL season, and the Denver Broncos are on the longest winning streak with five games, which puts them in that, that opportunity to be part of the postseason playoffs. There are 12 wildcard teams, and only five of them have a high chance of making it to the playoffs. The teams are the Steelers, the Browns, the Texans, the Broncos, Buffalo Bills. In Formula One news, on Sunday morning was um, their final race of the new season, of the season. The race took place at Yas Marina Circuit in Abu Dhabi. Um, the podium showcase a surprising position three from George Russell for the Mercedes teams. In position two was Charles Leclerc for Ferrari. And in first position was Max Max for Red Bull. Um, Max um, has now become the first driver in history to lead 1,000 laps in season. And Formula One will now be on pause until March of 2024 where they will have their Season opener in Bahrain. In local news, um, True New Jersey, also known as NewJersey.com, announced a NFL game between the Eagles and they will be playing playing against San Francisco. This game will be taking place on December 3rd, 2023 at the Lincoln Financial Field. The game will begin at 425 Eastern p.m. and it can be watched on Fox News Channel. In women's at Montclair State University on Tuesday, November 28, 2023, um, they made the all-regional Ivy team, and the student athletes are Eileen Cahill, who is on the first team, and it's also her third consecutive all-region. She was named an academic all-American last year. Um, she's the NJAC Offensive Player of the Year and led the team with 12 goals and 31 points. On September 13, Cahill scored a goal against national ranked Miss Misericordia, and the score was 4-1. to one. On October 4, Cahill fired nine shots in a victory against Arcadia. The score was 2-1. to one. Megan O'Callaghan is also on first team and her third consecutive all-region. She contributed five goals and eight assists, which does include two game-winning tallies. O'Callaghan is... Navales. It's her first time in her three years, and she's also on the second team honor. She started all 19 contests in as an outside back for this season. She scored in the season 
opener victory against Alvernia, as well as back-to-back -back assists and wins over the NJCU and Stevens. And lastly, we have Kylie, who is her second team honors, and it's her second time being nominated. She led Montclair with nine assists, eight goals, and 25 points. She opened NJ Ack with a goal and two helpers against NJCU, scored twice against Rutgers New Work. And that is all for WMSC Sports. Back to you, Marissa. Thank you so much for that sports cast, Girlene. So moving on to our first story of the night, Henry Kissinger dies at 100 years old. Henry Kissinger, the former Secretary of State, died at the age of 100. He is most known, known for his gruff yet commanding president, presence and behind-the-scenes manipulation of power. Kissinger grew, grew his power during the turmoil of Watergate when the politically attuned diplomat assumed a role akin to co-president to the weakened Nixon. He passed away in his home in Connecticut. We are sending our condolences to his family during this difficult time. All right, up next, we have the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lighting. The Rockefeller, Christ the Rockefeller Christmas tree lighting was celebrated tonight with performances by Cher, Kelly Clarkson, Barry Manilow, and many other artists. This Christmas tree lighting is a tradition that first began back in 1933 and draws thousands of people to Rockefeller Plaza every year. I know I am one of those thousands who go every year. This year, the Christmas tree is an 80-foot tall Norway spruce that was transported, I'm sorry, that was transported almost 200 miles all the way to Manhattan. Aside from the artists making appearances, the legendary Radio City Rockettes will also be making their iconic performance. The tree decorated with 50,000 multicolored lights and topped with a Swarovski crystal star will be lighting up the plaza for the next few weeks. And I know I will be in attendance. I am so excited. Hopefully, I do really want to go and see the um, tree this year in New York. I would love to go and see that. What it's about you guys? Have you got? Have you guys ever seen the Christmas tree in New York? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank Hi. you. Emil. Thank you. Hi. Uh, this is this is Emil, by the way. Um, it's been a couple of years since I was there. I live in Bergen County, so I'm pretty close to it. So it's just kind of like the usual, which is interesting. And I see that a lot of people come from very far and wide locations to go see a really big tree. <laughs> and uh, the fact that it brings a lot of people joy makes me happy. And uh, I haven't seen it in a minute, but I know it's there. I believe you. You know in the back of your head that it's there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be right in front of you. You know it's there. I would love to go and see it. I haven't seen it in a couple of years either, but I'm also more from South Jersey. So I don't have the opportunity to come up here and that see it as often nothing. as I can. I'm also down more. You're 35 minutes closer than I am. Not right? really. Not really. Yeah, I, just, I just hop on a train. I have a train, which is convenient. I Okay. I've never been on a train until... I went to Montclair. Interesting. Because there was just never any, any around. Yeah, that's true. My town has a very convenient train station. So we always, every year, my family, we go see a Broadway show. We stop at the tree and then we watch the light show on the side of Saks Fifth Avenue. It's really cute. I, I don't know what their theme is this year, but they always switch up their theme and do like... What theme did you say? Uh, when you went? Do you remember? No. no I don't no. know. They do different ones everywhere. I think last year was like Elton John. Um, but, and I know one year they did like a Disney sort of a theme. Um, I don't know what they have this year though, but is this, anybody else? Is this the tree you're talking about? Yeah. I didn't know they do themes. Oh, okay. So the, it was just lights. So the tree I didn't even doesn't know we did themes either. So the this. tree doesn't have a theme, but the tree is at Rockefeller and there's like a almost like an alley of sorts that you can walk down and at the end of that alley there's a store and on that storefront there's a light show. Oh, so a lot okay. of people they'll do both the tree and watch the light show at the same time. So you ever seen Home Alone 2 Lost in New York? Yeah. Okay, you know when he's like <laughs> the full full government name, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. So the the part where he's alone looking at the tree, and you see like the little statues of angels and stuff there too. Yeah, yeah. That is the alleyway. Oh. So if you walk down those little angel statues, you'll see the side, and um, there's a light show and music, and it and it goes every couple of minutes. It'll um restart and do the light show over again. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's always nice, especially at night when it's you know, dark and yeah. get to actually see the lights. Although I feel like the any time I did go, the crowds were always crazy. So, yeah. so I'm, and I would assume, especially now when it's just getting lit up, it's going to be pretty 
like intense over there yeah. right now. So maybe mid December would be a good time for me to go. Yeah, we'll, it's really cool. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. Evening, evening buzz, buzz trip to <laughs> trip to. <laughs> to new york yeah exactly to see the tree lighting exactly it's like a must you have to do it at least once yeah for sure it's like a big touristy thing i know kelly clarkson was like hosting the lighting of it yeah 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 kelly clarkson Cher, barry manilow and many other artists nice nice it is nice did you go ever see the tree girlie i've never seen the tree because i'm from south jersey too yeah 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 yeah. we're kind of we're kind of near each other a little bit but also, I feel like one of the reasons why a lot of people wouldn't go is because, like, the weather is super yeah. cold. And especially now when it's been, like, this weird fluctuation between warm and cold. And now I feel like we're finally in the cold front. I think we're finally kind of over that fluctuation. But even now, I mean, I the cold never bothered me too much. A little bit, but. Okay, Elsa. <laughs> all right guys all right whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, guys 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 but but i would still go and see him so just make sure you bundle up if you do yeah exactly. especially in the city oh my god those winds will kill you yeah that's the i feel like that's one of yeah no the winds are crazy in the city it's so much colder in new york than it is even here and we're pretty close to it too yeah i mean it does get cold here because we are on a mountain but yeah there's that Going on to our next story, how low will gas prices go? That's right. Right now, gas is under $3 a gallon. This marks the first time in about two years in North Jersey that gas prices are at it, are this low, according to data from the Federal Reserve. This news comes as consumers begin the holiday shopping season while also dealing with the impacts of inflation, student loan payments, higher interest rates, and the soaring credit card debt. According to the Travel Club AAA, the, the average state price was $3.28 as of today. Last month, the price was $3.40, and last year, the gas prices were $3.70. I... I'm very happy about this because I've been talking about gas prices for so long and I I love driving like I'll just hop in my car and I'll just drive places sometimes so the fact that now I can do that more often it's really nice this is actually so interesting to me because I play a little game alone with myself when I'm driving from from school back to home I always look and look and like notice the different gas stations and I compare the prices so like the prices up here compared to like back down home and then I'm like okay what was the highest and what was lowest so going back for Thanksgiving the highest that I had seen was I want to say 338 and the lowest that I saw was 294 whoa yeah where was that uh near my home okay yeah. okay okay so field trip to get gas field trip to get gas. <laughs> after this yeah, yeah, yeah or should yeah, we yeah. end early no maybe oh. end early Ooh, okay. we have to end the morning buzz early to get gas prices guys sorry sorry guys the evening buzz, evening evening buzz. buzz. oh my gosh <laughs> sorry wow who here who here does drive i do, I do. everyone here drives I drive. Army tank. you drive <laughs> i drive it's expensive an army to tank. fill up my army tank of course aka honda crv <laughs> i i can only imagine how expensive it would be to fill up your army tank emo so we can all kind of relate to this like this all really affects all of us in a good way in a great way <laughs> what 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 sorry i was reminded that I, I actually it's it's a i have a i have a playlist for every song that plays as i entered the garden state partway garden state park park, state. park garden state parkway every time i start going on uh accelerate my speed i can't speak tonight it doesn't matter how early or how late it is i can't say <laughs> words but every time i go on to the parkway I add a song to the playlist because I still have anxiety as I drive really fast speeds. I was just reminded of that. That's what, what, are, what are some? Can you? We want to give us some of your songs on there. Oh, goodness. you want to pull up the playlist? Yeah, I'll pull up the playlist. I I started this in 2020 back when I was a commuter, um, because of this little thing called COVID 19, um, and it never heard of it. To be that. Yeah, it's some indie band you've never heard of. <laughs> um, <laughs> So um, the very first songs that I added were The Key to Life on Earth by Declan McKenna. I like Black Madonna by KG Elephant because I was really into those artists uh, back in 2020. And most recently, I have a lot of Kim Dracula, Crown the Empire and the Smiths. Um, And so I'm I'm afraid of going speedy roads. Um, But to go back into uh, gas prices and such, another thing that I'm afraid of is going to the gas station. Um, I'm really glad that I don't have to pump my own gas. Shout out Phil Murphy. 
um shout out new jersey um but i have i've had a car since 2019 and i have never once gone to a gas station that isn't the one in my town like the specific one never in all these years how and that's impressive it's called anxiety and well thank you it's dedication (laughs) and uh the people there are pretty nice and i just feel pretty comfortable um i feel like they see blue hair roll up and they're like oh it's that one um in a good way in a good way um the only bad thing is sometimes i park a little too close to the thing and then i can't like i have to get my steering wheel out whatever whatever but uh like like i have i have to like wiggle it so that i could get off of the curb but anyway um i've only ever actually drive with a steering wheel (laughs) only when she goes to a gas station she just has to like hold on guys goes into the passenger seat and just like takes it out pops it back in i gotta get my steering wheel out um, guys i move my car with my mind um just um but no in all seriousness um i always go to this one gas station because that's what i'm familiar with and i was driving back from holiday break on monday and i was debating whether or not i make it to class a couple minutes early or uh maybe come in a couple minutes late just because i have to go to this gas station i had to go to the gas station um and i am very much like i need to get where i need to be and i don't necessarily pay attention to the prices that much because it's like no matter what i need to pay it but what's good is i noticed it at least it started with a three (laughs) <laughs> yeah right yeah this time around yeah. was basically a full tank of gas i think it was like 36 for my car which is bad. really good because yeah. you know way back when it was it this time last year or two years probably ago? like two years ago i would think i think it was two years but it started with like a six oh my and God. you know it was very expensive for my army tank. tank yeah because the gas prices went up a lot oh. Um, so I, for one, am very grateful to see the number go down and I don't see it by gallons as much as I see it by total. And it's like half of what I paid two years ago for my army tank CRV. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. And (laughs) even, even during COVID a lot of times, because during COVID it wasn't too much and then it started going up and I saw some gas stations that had gas stations that had it at a seven. So you would really have to go around to find that $6 gas station, Mm -hmm. but and especially crazy. if you actually drive something that's more like an army tank yeah and not just like a little car oh, that i have saying you don't drive an army uh, tank? no it is an army tank this okay. guy's is a honda crv all right all right good good you have me worried there for a second but even with bigger cars you know i'm i'm glad for those people even more so to see the prices go down mm-hmm. speaking of uh I was real quick about filling up like your own tank of gas i had to do it for, like for the first time a couple <laughs> months ago in uh new york state and i had uh my fortune told to me as i was doing it it was like really? it was ma- midnight and there was like nobody the there. The fortune teller was like, "Hmm, I sense you're getting gas soon in the future." <laughs> they, oh, how right they were. Yeah, they ca- they came up to me. And they're like, "Hey, I, I'll tell you your fortune for a dollar." And I'm like filling up my my tank. I'm like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" I gave them a dollar. They were like, "Don't wear blue tomorrow." <laughs> and then just walked the away. Next day? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh my did anything God. happen? No. Aw, well, yeah, something happened. You wore blue, oh, and you had true. a fortune to guess. This is also true. What if someone went to email and said not to wear blue? What would she what do? Would I do? Oh, would you have to dye her hair? I would never. I just put my hair back and hope nobody sees. I wear a hoodie. I wanted to Don't ask. Look at me. I wanted to ask who here can pump their own gas. <laughs> no, yes. I think I did it once before. Ask okay. me if I remember. Do you remember? No. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, Girlene. No. No. Okay, so me and Danny are the only ones that can pump our own gas. We can go out of state. We're yeah. surviving the zombie apocalypse. But I think I can do anything I put my mind to if I really tried. I, mean, you try, I can't. I'm just going to say no, pumpkin. Pump, 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 <laughs> pumpkin. Not pumpkin. This isn't Halloween. But pumping my own gas makes me feel so independent. Like, I feel like a super <laughs> I'm good. doing it. Quick play Pump It Louder by the Black Eyed Peas. I could be entirely <laughs> dependent. I don't mind. Shout out Phil Murphy. <laughs> Pumping my own gas makes me really feel like a man. <laughs> it really does. I'm like, oh, uh, <laughs> I feel right, just as right. manly asking someone else to do the job for me. Oh Hi, I'm so excited to return to Buzz talking more about music news. In the past, I've talked about tunes on Tuesday, but as it's Wednesday and this particular Wednesday, November 29th, I'm going to talk about the most pressing news announcement in the music scene all over the globe. Spotify Wrapped released earlier today. If you don't already know, in 2015, Spotify released its very first year in music, which showed the artists that people listen to the most throughout the year since they changed the name to a more familiar name, Spotify Wrapped. And it now features a lot more elements, including 
users top five artists top five songs top genres and total minutes listened some year specific elements i uh, include musical aura i remember that from a couple years ago and i liked the, the little gradients that they showed users this year they gave us peak listening months for top artists and the way you listen to this year that i interpret it kind of looks like tarot cards uh it's very personalized depending on how you form your music if you listen to a lot of playlists you kind of listen to whatever is showing up on your feed or like myself i tend to listen to a lot of albums all the way through and they give you a cool little picture to go along with that uh, they also give you some insight into your status on your top artists listening some discovered that they were in like the top one percent of some of the artist listeners uh, and some are higher i think the most the lowest percentage i saw was 0.005 uh, some people were for some artists which is pretty pretty interesting uh apple music also released their version of wrapped called replay 2023 that released yesterday on uh, november 28th that gave users a similar taste of their end of year favorites including top albums artists genres and songs prior to 2022 youtube only released an end of the year playlist with top songs but this morning youtube music released their youtube music recap which debuted just last year they include new features as well including your 2023 album cover which combines the color scheme of users favorite track of the year a font based on the energy of their top genre and background art based on the mood of the music they listen to they also released data on the user's mood the genres that they listen to, and of course, the classic top artists and top songs. I, myself, am a YouTube music listener. I don't care what other people have to say. And I was very excited to see that they have been advancing their technology a little bit, giving me a little bit more insight into some of the music I listen to, because that is a little bit more of an accurate representation of where I listen to music. But back to Spotify instead, we are going to talk about the top 10 artists globally, according to Spotify, in descending order number 10 this year. And by the way, anyone please correct me on any of the artists that I do not pronounce correctly, but I will pronounce Lana Del Rey correctly at number 10. Number nine, Carol G. Number eight, SZA. <laughs> number seven, Travis Scott, or as I wrote in the script, Travis Scott. I don't know the next artist. Six is five. Number five, Peso Pluma. Peso. <laughs> number four is Drake. Number three, The Weeknd. Number two, Bad Bunny. And number one, the global top artist in the year with 26 billion plus streams worldwide is Taylor Swift. I'm sure that's a huge shocker to everybody worldwide. I'm surprised. Shook. And you know where else she is? I'm going to talk about the top 10 songs globally, according to Spotify. Again, talking about Taylor Swift, number 10 is Antihero by Taylor Swift. Number nine, Shakira. I don't know the next word. Berserk Music Sessions, volume 53 by Berserk and Shakira. Number eight, Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez. Number seven, Creepin' by Metro Bloomin', The Weeknd and 21 Savage. Number six, we have Taylor Swift again with Cruel Summer. Number five, oh no. It's, it's Ella pronounced baila sol Ella Baila Sola. We should really be giving Joey Emo, the mic Emo, as I Emo. say this. Bye, Peso Pluma. Oh gosh. Number four is seven, <laughs> which makes me laugh. Bye, Jungkook. Yes, that's what it is. Number three, As It Was by Harry Styles, which is interesting. I'm pretty sure that song came out last year. Number two, Kill Bill by SZA. And number one, Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Uh, also, I think it's Metro Boomin. Metro yeah. Boomin? Yeah, not Metro Boomin. Say, that would make more sense. It's I'm Orlando reading this. Blooms, cousin. Emo. <laughs> emo. 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 They're, they're, Spring. They, let me give emo. you the headset because they're asking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm putting the ears on. Hello, I can hear the other room. Hello, emo. Hi. It's me. It's Lizbeth. Hi, Lizbeth. The, the Morning Buzz producer, assistant producer. Uh, no, I just wanted to tell you how to pronounce that weird word. It's pronounced bizarrap. Bizarrap. Yeah, I don't know why they have to make that shortened version of it <laughs> when they talk about the music sessions, but I don't know how to pronounce the the short version of it. I Bizarre. just know that the artist is yeah, Bizarrap. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. You did good. So you did thank good with you. the pronunciations. I, I try my best. I usually stick with the rock alternative charts for an iHeartRadio and Nine the Times on Mondays at 4 p.m. Uh, uh, pronounce all the words. But uh, worldwide, a little bit, a little bit out of my comfort zone. But I'm very excited to hear a lot of these songs have been represented worldwide, 
And though it's not a lot of music that I listen to, a lot of music that I respect, uh, Harry Styles, as it was, was actually featured on my show. So he's kind of in the alternative genre. That's, um, that's... I wish I had more more stats just for the alternative scene. Hopefully sometime soon we'll be seeing a little bit more of that. But I do want to make sure that I bring this back to home a little bit more in WMSC. Let's talk about everyone's wrapped of the year. I want to know the people who are here for our lovely nighttime buzz. Did you anticipate that your top artist would be your top artist? And who is it? Yes. Absolutely I, not. I, I expect my top artist to be the top artist. Who is it? It's David Robidoux. He's the composer for NFL films. I listen anytime I work out, I listen to NFL films music. So that's like the go to. And for me, it's like I've listened to I've listened since I was a kid, so it just kinda kinda fits in. That's so boring. I'm just kidding. I love you. I'm just kidding. I should, I should kick you. Wow. I'm not surprised, though. You. I'm not surprised. Yeah, no. So mine was so disappointing, but also, like, kind I of wasn't hilarious. super. Yeah, it was it's it was hilarious. kind of hilarious. I was expecting my top artist to be either Mother Mother or Steven Sanchez, and it was Coldplay for some reason. And oh, I was telling Cam earlier that I believe the reason why that happened to me and why my Spotify wrapped got ruined was because I think I fell asleep with Coldplay on shuffle and it stayed on the whole night and so then Spotify registered my top artist as Coldplay so I think I think the list is incorrect it is inaccurate mm. hilarious thumbs down <laughs> Nina how about you I'll keep it short and sweet Bad Bunny I don't know I don't know it literally that. was there is proof but, but what about you guys over there us in the studio who starts who wants to start first Emil. Oh, Emil's going to talk first. <laughs> All right. Well, I was a little bit surprised that my number one for Spotify was Moniskin. Uh, I do love them, so I'm not surprised that they were in the top five, but it's because I was anticipating a different artist to be my number one. But don't you fear. Kim Dracula was my number one artist on YouTube. Gotta be. I listen to YouTube music a lot more. Shout out Kim Dracula. Debut album came out in July, and I haven't stopped listening to it since. Especially shout out to the single Killdozer that everyone seems to be singing in the back end of the station. I, I can talk about music forever, so I'm going to make sure I give the <laughs> mic back to Jolie. All right. My top artist, which is quite shocking because it is the first time in a very long time that my top three are not taken by some Broadway show or Lin-Manuel Miranda. Who are top three? Always there Who's somehow in the Glee cast. My top artist this year was Renee Rapp. Yeah. I love it. My Spotify wrapped. Just kidding. I use Apple. It was my Apple replay. I get it. It's your Renee Rapped. <laughs> <laughs> move it on, move on. Danny? Uh, so I was not surprised at all. Uh, it was Pierce the Veil. I have never left my emo phase since like the sixth grade. Yeah. So I'm that's still here. Sure, so. Yeah, that's it's really funny because we, we have a show. Our, yeah. our programming director, Lara Zaccardi, has a show called My Emo Phase. Yeah, and it, when I shadow it, I was just in my element. I just loved the music. <laughs> you were just, that was, was, that was, was your vibing. stuff. Yeah, big vibes, big vibes. Garleen? I'm not surprised either because... It's the weekend. I love the weekend. Oh, yeah. The weekend every it's single baby. day. <laughs> every weekend. <laughs> Girl, listen to the weekend on the weekdays. Ironic. Anyway. Wow, that's crazy. All right. So I guess we got everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Marissa Thorne, hold on. The rack. Your number one song better be Rats in the Kitchen. It's not. What is, what is it? What is it? Um. Okay. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. I knew. It was going to be this. The Jimmy Buffett. No, I wish so it was Jimmy was. Buffett. I wish it was Jimmy Buffett. I love Jimmy Buffett. Um, I knew it was going to be this. And I'm, I can't be upset because I knew, but I'm still disappointed. Is it silly and sad? sad? What is it? I'm on the edge of my what? seat. Is it silly and sad? No. My top artist or my top song? Yes. Whatever you feel like. So my top, my top artist is a, is, okay. His name is Will Wood, and if you know Will Wood's songs, it adds up to who I am. And not a lot of people know his songs, but um, you, uh, I, I like them. They're kind of crazy and all over the place in the best way possible. What uh, genre is Will Wood? Yes. Okay. Anyway. I love that genre. Um, My top song was The First Step by Will Wood. That I was kind of surprised about. I did not think I listened to that song as much as I did, but... 
Um, also, he has a, he's in a band and then he's a solo artist. So my top two artists were Both Will Wood him. and then Will Wood and the Tapeworms. <laughs> like, and, <laughs> excuse me, I'm and, the Tapeworms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his band name. Wow. That was, that was, yeah. Um, but those he was in my top two spots. So I feel like my top, like my second so spot. So you just count your of... top eleven as your top ten. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like my top. So who two was spots. who was actually in your in your number two spot? Number oh i would have to look that up i can't remember I'll marissa have i just leave. viewed the artist on spotify and he has a rat on his shoulder <laughs> <laughs> symbolism now yeah yeah he does he's he's a silly cool guy um if you listen to his music that's kind of I, I think if you listen to his music you'll be like ah that makes sense that marissa likes him but it's not everyone's cup of tea and i know that so usually if i'm in the car with someone it's i not do not fine. i drink I, coffee Usually if I'm in the car with someone, I do not play my music for them because I know my music is not everyone's cup of tea. And people are usually like, this stinks. And I'm like, I enjoy it. And that's all that matters. And we are going to move right into our next segment. This is Am I in the Wrong? So this is Am I in the Wrong for Wanting My Girlfriend to Cook for Me After I Gave Her Food Poisoning? My girlfriend and I have been together for three years and we moved in together in April. She's a great cook and learned from her Italian grandmother, but she can make almost anything under the sun. We traveled a lot when, when, when she was younger, and she, she loves Asian food the most. I thought I was a good cook, but she says my cooking is terrible. She took over the cooking now, now that we live together, and tried to teach me, but then got impatient because she thought I wasn't trying. I am, but she gets mad when I don't get it the first time. I don't think she's that great of a teacher either. She got mad because I didn't check if my chicken was done by cutting into it and making it sure it wasn't pink. I usually just poke it like she does, but she insists I cut into it because I'm not very experienced. Recently, she wanted me to cook once a week, and I've been trying, even though it's clearly not coming out very well. She's a way better cook. Why doesn't she just cook? It's clear, it's clear she enjoys it, but she insists that I learn. I can feed myself, but I don't feel like I need to. I feel like I don't need to get as good as she is. Clearly her food is better clearly her food is better, but I can survive on my cooking, so that's good enough for me. Anyway, I cooked chicken and broccoli and she ate a few pieces and then got up and cut up the chicken and it was pink. She got really angry and yelled at me and for trying to give her food poisoning. It's clearly just a mistake and I apologize, but she has had food poisoning for a few days and had to miss work. Now she won't cook for me and just cooks for herself. I usually eat out now, and now that she doesn't pack my tub aware, and it's really sad because it's one of the few things that I really enjoyed, sitting down for lunch and seeing what she made for me. I told her she's put punishing me for no reason, and she's gotten mad and told me I intentionally didn't cook the chicken right, and I'm always expecting her to cook like I'm a kid. I'm pretty upset by her comments, and we've argued over it, but I guess it's her right not to cook for me. So... Am I in the wrong? Yes. Is, yes. Is she? Yes. You're, oh, He's oh, in the wrong. He, okay. Bro, you're a grown man. You can learn how to cook yourself. Like, oh, I do want to give a little disclaimer. This is not any of our personal stories. These stories are from anonymous people on Reddit. Sorry about that, Cam. Keep going. Keep going. You are a grown man. If you, like, you know, one thing cool, food poison, like, Accents happen like that. You can be resourceful, and she like she gets mad. Whatever, cool. Yo, what did you just say? But like, dog, <laughs> you're said. a grown man. Why do you expect your girlfriend to cook for you? If you if you're not, just go figure it out yourself. If you're hungry, go cook yourself. No, I I I fully agree. I think that it's a little ridiculous to expect. It's something nice that you do for each other, like taking turns and whatnot. But I don't know. Expecting it is yeah, like, kind of crazy. But he wasn't expecting it. I think it's a life skill and you should know how to do this the basic, you know, like survival task of cooking is is something that like you should know how to you should know how to cook. You should know how to clean. You should know how to do laundry and dishes and you'd be surprised life about, skills. You'd be surprised when people at, at our age don't know how to do half that stuff. That's Actually, true. all that stuff. I think it's crazy. Like when you get to college, you realize how much stuff like other people weren't taught. Yeah, they weren't taught these things. I mean, he was. Sorry, he, he was also cooking like raw chicken, like it was still pink inside. If she leaves, he's like, it's gonna get salmonella or something. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying you, too is that he's he says here that 
it's good enough. He's like, I can survive on my own cooking, so that's good enough for me. Boy, if you're surviving on your own cooking, you are going to get salmonella, and you can get very sick. Like, you're, she's trying to teach you so that you become a better cook, not just for her, but for yourself, too, because if you keep cooking like this, then you're just going to get sick. Yeah. I can't cook to save my life, but I know how to do laundry, and I would love to make an exchange with an individual <laughs> one day. <laughs> Who will cook for me and I will do, do laundry, laundry in return. And maybe one day I will learn how to cook, but that day is not today. However, in the meantime, I would not expect it of a significant other to just do it without a confirm a confer a conversation yeah. about, hey, I will do this for you if you do this for me. Relationships are all about give and take, but also they're not about just expecting something of somebody especially when the other person feels like hey this is a skill that you should develop but should she be putting in a little bit more of like oh double checking like the the fact that she just got food poisoning knowing that like he wasn't the best cook or unless i'm misreading the story maybe she should have double checked that too just understanding that he's in a learning process that too i guess but i don't i don't know i think it's kind of crazy to assume that he did it intentionally i don't think he did i don't think he oh, did no yeah, not at all no yeah, he, like, he's learning but you know in that process of learning i'd be a little bit wary of like but I'm just gonna double check the color of this chicken but she did she did specifically <laughs> tell him to cut the chicken open to check yeah. it and he didn't yeah mm. so and he didn't own up to the responsibility he's like she's mad at me for no reason no she's mad because you gave her food poisoning after <laughs> she tried telling you what to do right and I think I think I think it's completely valid of her to only cook for herself now. He should learn. Yeah, yeah. he should learn. Yeah, make yeah. him learn. While I I would be on my journey of learning how to cook things <laughs> again, I would not expect someone to just do it for me. I will I'll take care of myself. I'll go get some you know fast food or something in the meantime, just yeah. so I don't get food poisoning. Even no, though you never know. I'm about to know. run up his his totals because one. Eating out every single day is expensive. That, that's expensive. expensive. Yeah, that, I feel right. rack up. All right. Yeah. So can we all agree that he is in the wrong? Yeah. I yeah, I agree right. he's in the wrong. So sure. then Reddit's vote was he was in the wrong. Good. So, womp womp. Womp womp. Did you say womp womp? Did you say womp womp? I just womp womp. Womp womp Good. Womp. Because, but dog, you are a grown man. Yeah. We do for man. yourself. Figure it out. All this talk about food. I'm getting hungry. All right, so we are going to move on to our entertainment and weird news section. So, first off, Olivia Rodrigo and Billie Eilish are going to be on SNL for the final of 2023 episode of SNL of Saturday Night Live. Olivia Rodrigo and Billie Eilish will serve as musical guests on the show. Rodrigo is set to perform during the, the December 9th show, which will be hosted by Adam Driver. Eilish will be performing on December 16th, which is the Kate McKinnon episode. Both artists are returning as musical guests as Rodrigo performed Driver's License and Good For You in previous years. This time around marks Eilish's third time on the show as she had performed Bad Guy and other songs from her uh, debut LP, when we fall asleep, where do we go? Banger. And Olivia Rodrigo is not the only jealous one here, obviously. The Mean Girls are because the Mean Girls experience is coming in January of 2024. Two versions of the Mean Girls experience will open in Los Angeles and New York City. In LA, it will open on January 12th, 2024. And in New York, it will open on January 19th of 2024. This follows the release of the previously announced Paramount Pictures film adaptation of the Tony Award nominated Broadway musical Mean Girls. This new experience will feature a fast, casual restaurant offering Mean Girls-themed meals, drinks, and desserts developed by Master Chef and semi-finalist Becky Brown. The experience will also include some reactions of specific scenes and quotes. I'm sorry, some recreations of specific scenes and quotes from the film Happy Hour and more. In a statement, Derek Barry, the bucket listers, president of experiences said quote with the new film quickly approaching there was no better time to honor this beloved classic and bring the plastics world to life every day here will be october 3rd this is so cool 
Yeah. I'm super excited for this, honestly. We wanted this to be a surprise for you because we want your honest reaction. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely so excited for this. I love Mean Girls. I love both the movie and the musical. Mm-hmm. And now the movie musical. Can't wait for oh, it. I'm so excited for the movie musical. Evening Buzz takes on Mean Girls, the movie musical. Right, we got to make a list of things we're taking on, apparently. Okay, great. The Christmas tree, Mean Girls, the musical. I'm so excited. And we're also going to teach Emo how to cook. Yeah. And pump gas. And pump, and pump I, gas. I don't know how to cook or pump gas. And you know what else I've actually never, ever seen you, or heard? No, this? I've no. never seen Mean Girls. Oh, I've never heard the soundtrack. I'm, I know. I'm very disappointing. Girl, same. <laughs> right, well, I, mean, I know, but that's expected of you, Cam. That's fair. <laughs> Emo. And then there's me. I pull out these really unfortunate facts. But Pumpkin's in shock. Is fine as long as I'm in New Jersey. What if you want to leave the state? What if you want to go to New York? Someone else could drive me. Someone else could cook for me. <laughs> Someone else can watch Mean Girls Someone for me. Someone else can watch Mean Girls for me. But that only means that all of us need to watch it together for my, my first Mean Girls experience. And really. we will. Mean Girls 2003 is a cinematic masterpiece. It is so fetch i can't believe that you have so never fetch. seen this movie it's like it literally it's a cultural phenomenon it's it's gruel culture. she it's, doesn't even go here it literally she, she doesn't go here. even go here i just i just i'm baffled. she doesn't understand that reference Come i'm on baffled now. she won't understand that reference after saying that wait how do you know if you've never seen it i can i i i i grew up in the 2000s on the internet i know Ooh. i know memes okay okay Ooh. Whatever. I will have to watch it sometime soon. Have a bonding experience and watch it all together. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of bonding experience opportunities here (laughs) on the evening buzz. Yeah, on the evening buzz. That's true. There is. Yeah. Someone write write that down. Write that down. (laughs) Write that down, Emo. I'll write it down. Emo's clickety clacketing away. (laughs) I hear it. I hear it. (laughs) Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cam. All right. And then on to our third story. Here is from. Super dad, a dad from Ohio, from Idaho, pushed his quintrup- quintuplets in a stroller and ended up winning a Guinness World Record. He pushed the stroller with his five children inside with a distance of one kilometer in five minutes and 34 seconds. Very impressive. Chad Kempel of Eagle took the running track, took to the running track at Eagle High School. The dad's other two five-year-old kids cheered him on from the sidelines along with their mother. He told Guinness World Records, quote, Since we had five babies at the same time, we needed a stroller that would seat five children. So we purchased the quintuple pram. And since it has great wheels for speed, so I decided to push the stroller while I was out for my jogs. His accomplishment earned him the second, earned him the record for the fastest one kilometer pushing a quintuple pram. That is quite the um, quite the accomplishment he's got there. All right, Marissa. A... So I I got I got this going on too. A kilometer, by the way, for those of you that are of the uh, imperial sort, I'm gonna I'm gonna translate okay. that for feet. Uh, it's three thousand two hundred eighty feet. Man, I can do that. Yeah, psh, I could do that, man. No, no, no. That, just kidding. I could not. I could not. In five minutes. That that that's a little. That's a little over Let's six six tenths of a mile. Oh, I'm, I'm, I kind of want to attempt. In five minutes, yeah. with pushing five kids in a stroller. Has yeah. anybody ever pushed five kids in a stroller? No, no. I have. Has, does this mean this man has seven kids? What? Yeah, because he has quintuple, a quintuple, like and then two on many. the sideline. That sounds like seven, <laughs> seven too many. <laughs> no, has anybody ever pushed a, a stroller of more than one child? Has anybody pushed a stroller before? Yes. Has anyone pushed a child? <laughs> my yeah. my cat. Uh, we have a stroller for my cat because my cat loves the outdoors, well, but he do. will run away. Will it hold so, five cats? No, quintuple can stroller. I get five cats. Can I get, I get five, five more cats? cats? I would love. Many cats, cats and rats. I don't cats think and mix. rats. Yeah, I don't think those mix. Um, if you train them right, they will. <laughs> so, or if you ratatouille. Whoa, <laughs> whoa! Well, well, I'm just the rat whisperer, so I'll be able to do it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. True. But um, yeah, no, super impressive, super impressive. But yeah, dog, 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 literally ran six tenths of a mile, and with five kids. Honestly, props to the mom as well. Seven kids. Yeah, honestly, crazy, yeah. crazy. You know what else is crazy? In- I was crazy once. People, no, we're not doing that. Stop it. 
<laughs> this Stop. recycling center shut down. In England, a recycling center was evacuated when an escaped go or ram paid an unexpected visit. The Essex County Council said that the recycling center was evacuated for the safety of the public when an animal dubbed, quote, Roger the Ram was spotted in the area. The, the council identified the animal as a ram, but personnel with the exit with Liz, the Essex Roger Horse the and Pony Protection Society that assisted in the animal's capture Roger. suggested that it could have Hello? possibly been a breed of goat. In a social media post, the Essex County Council said, quote, staff gently detained Roger once he had completed his inspection of the site. Thank you to all staff on site at Pitsy for their quick thinking and action under pressure. The recycling center is back open as usual and all, not at all rammed. Eventually, the animal was returned to its owner. That is wild. I thought this was Jersey for a second. I was like, when is there? Oh, Essex, Jersey? Essex County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. in England. I started with that, my guy. No, no, no I just have like a really bad <laughs> memory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should have done it in a British accent because it was in England. No. <laughs> I guess we got to restart. We have I to guess start we from the beginning. Nope. Know. Give it we're, to us. We're, we're good. We're good off that. We are good off that. Wow. Well, I I'm, feel the love. I, I, I think you could have done it. You could have done it, but you should have done it off rip. Uh, you could have you could you could have done it. Maybe you shouldn't have, but you definitely could have. Just because it's, it's, it's a case of just because you can doesn't mean you should. Is what I Marissa's saying. I it's what five Marissa's saying. Minutes left of the show, so I'm gonna do the rest of the show in accents. See, that oh. works better. You should. I'm I'm just mad you didn't start the you know, story off like. Yeah, that. you're right. You're right, Cam. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you're right, Mike. My, my, <laughs> minus five. Right. That's Australian right there, Dan. Minus five. <laughs> you're right. My fault. That's all right. Get that proper proper and, accent in there. Like, Roger the Ram is hilarious. Yeah, Roger, like. I don't understand why um but why they're not sure what he actually is though. Is it a goat or is it a ram? He's delicious. You know what else is delicious in no. European? Did you say delicious. Oh. You wanna know what else is delicious? Delicious and European? Today is Dutch Pancake Day. You heard that right. Happy Dutch Pancake Day, guys. This quirky made-up tradition has been gaining a lot of attraction in the Netherlands. Every year on this day, a number of Netherland residents put pancakes on their heads in a silly celebration that gained attraction. Hello? <laughs> Followers of this tradition say, quote, we wish you a happy and blessed Saint Pancake. Back in 1986, the celebration was invented by a Dutch cartoonist named Jan Kroos, who where a father comes home in the evening to find his family wearing pancakes on their head. I think this is more of a Marissa, fashion statement than anything Marissa, else. But Marissa, what, what, what? I must say, it's actually pronounced Jan. It's Jan. Jan? Yeah, it's Jan. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks for the correction. It, it's because... Jan Pancake. It's like... Jan Pancake. Is Jan, Jan, Jan Croce. Jan Croce. Okay, thank you. But the fact that... Bro had walked into the crib and just see pancakes on his on his family's head. Bro should have walked out. Would you but, rather? Would you, you rather walk out into a place and see someone with a pancake on their head, or see a ram or goat? A, a goat. I, I would. I, a goat with a pancake on its head. <gasps> Bye. Can we start that holiday? Write that down. Write that down. Write that down, Emil. Go oh, and go. That's the place. Write it down. Uh, the day for goat pancake head day will be November thirtieth. We start tomorrow. Emil's whipping up the pancakes. Potato pancakes. Oh, I wonder why. Hanukkah. I like that. I like, I like that a lot. lot. Oh. I, I, I think the reason why, um, you know, we, we have this tradition is because, you know, we just, we just was one day in the crib. Just, we just see that thing. Yeah. Jolie, why did you just do that? that that's, that's egregious. I, just, I, I did not hear what you said. All I heard was my name. That's hilarious. This, 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 is, a, this is the pancake, man. Anyway, wait, are we using syrup or not? Nah, no, I don't like kind. syrup. Whoa, really? No, I, like I love syrup. I don't, it's too sticky. I yeah. don't like it. Oh, no, I, I, I forgot you're British. I don't like it, right? So, I like my pan. So, okay, I'll we'll do like good. fruit on top or like chocolate chips or Nutella. Sometimes a bit of, I was just gonna say sometimes a bit of I don't Nutella. use Nutella. I don't a use Nutella. Butter. A bit of butter. A bit of butter. Bro, no. Nah. See, see, y'all doing, y'all doing the most. I just, you know, just get the syrup and just call it. <laughs> Potato pancakes. What? We're back at potato pancakes. Oh, you we're back. Oh, you put back. apple syrup on your. No, you put applesauce on that. I oh don't God. like applesauce. You're, Why not? You're you're no. a villain. Do you, you, are a you like the consistency, or you don't like apples? I love apples. I don't really like the taste. Mm. You're a villain. But it's, it's a funny. consistency thing too. That's fine. 
But I do I, like apples. I like anything else apple, just I, not applesauce. I would not put maple syrup on my potato pancakes. I would. You said well, you like an apple? I do like apples. Then why don't you have a Mac? I like Oh, you. You're guys, the apple of my yeah, eye. Suddenly uh, Nino's mic is off. That's so crazy. Who yeah, prompted that? Maybe he's speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Nino's crying in studio right now. Yeah, I Good. hear it. I, I didn't turn it. his mic off because I don't know which one is his, and I don't want to punish uh, camera Liz. So we're here it's okay on the, on the nighttime buzz. We're crying on uh, we're evening crying. buzz here. Evening buzz. Speaking of evening buzz, crying in British. Unfortunately. It's that, is, that is it. It is bedtime, honestly, for all of us. It is time to honk shoe me, me, me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> all right. So that was the first ever evening buzz. And Thank you. <laughs> Woo! No, not <laughs> Woo. Thank you honor. so much for tuning in. This is 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. And this was the evening buzz. Good night.